All right, Gangstat 1150. Uh, what we did in the previous video is we looked at histograms, which are a way to uh, display quantitative uh, measurements. Uh, well, what if we have categorical variables? Um, uh, that's the purpose of this video is to introduce you to ways that um, uh, we graphically represent a variable when it is categorical. Now, an uh, interesting feature of StackCrunch that I haven't uh, shown you yet is that uh, uh, we can upload a data set uh, maybe that, uh, that we have that isn't uh, uh, accessible in StackCrunch. So if I go to the website, uh, I can go to Upload Data. And I actually have a data on my desktops called something like State Assessment. Yeah, right there it is. So it's in .csv. It, it, this will uh, allow you to upload in .csv, uh, Excel, uh, different formats, but uh, you know, we can just uh, uh, try on error. And uh, so upload, and it'll move it into StackCrunch where we can actually uh, perform the analysis. It's kind of cool. Now, uh, bouncing off the previous video, uh, again, most people read left to right. Uh, this person right here has an end assessment of 6.8. Uh, they are 11 years old. They have a state assessment of 5.2. They have a high, assess, uh, high SES, SES, social economic status of no. Uh, gender is male and private school, no. We can see that uh, we have a large data set here, I do believe. Uh, yeah, we do. We have uh, 725 subjects, so we have 725 cases, uh, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six variables. Uh, the first variables, uh, end assessment, age, and state are all quantitative, and socioeconomic status, gender, and private school status are all categorical. So how do we take a look at uh, displaying the categorical variables. So if we go to graph, uh, there is something that we can use called a, um, well, it's called a Pareto, P-A-R-E-T-O, but here it's called a bar plot. So I can go with data and I can take a look at, for example, high SES. I'm not going to worry about any of this stuff right now. And uh, what I get is I get something that kind of looks like a histogram. Okay, tattoo this to the brains. Uh, hugely important. First of all, the difference in a Pareto chart or a bar chart is, number one, the bars do not touch. And secondly, distribution shape does not apply. The reason it doesn't apply is that there's no natural ordering on the horizontal axis. I could have put yes first and no second, which would have completely reversed the shape of the distribution. Uh, so uh, in a histogram, we have a natural ordering on, this, uh, on the uh, horizontal line. Small numbers go to the left, and as we increase, we get into larger numbers, right? So there's a natural ordering. There's no natural ordering for uh, for a categorical variable. Therefore, again, distribution shape is not appropriate. So we can hover over. We can see that there are 648 students who are in uh, do not have high socioeconomic status, and there are 77 who are classified as high socioeconomic status. Uh, go with gender. I'll tell you what, let's just go ahead and pop in gender and uh, private school. So it uh, looked like uh, the, the gender, they've classified this by uh, as, as male and female. Um, again, a lot of times in, with gender is, is coded today, you'll have um, uh, with respect to, to non-binary subjects, we'll have male, female, and non-binary. Um, but this uh, data set uh, didn't uh, approach gender that way. We have 358 females, 
we have 367 males. So the proportion of males and uh, the proportion of females, uh, about the same in this data set. And you can quickly see that uh, from a chart. Now, for the private school status, uh, we can see that we have a lot more who aren't in private school, namely 561 versus 164. So again, you know, just like a histogram, except with the differences that I've uh, described previously, uh, this picture, this graph gives us a snapshot of the uh, frequencies in each group. Now, another uh, graph that we use quite often is called a pie chart. Um, and I'm trying to look down through here and see if there's anything else that I really want to um, share with you. I don't think there is right now. But a pie chart uh, is just as you would think. It's, um, it's appropriate for categorical variables. So I'm going to select um, uh, all three of these and give you an idea of what a pie chart looks like. Probably seen these ad nauseum. Uh, the bigger piece of the pie represents and is proportionate to the uh, most number of cases. So we can see high SES, most students are no, namely 89.38%. Or 8, so it gets a larger piece of the pie represented by no and yes. Again, hover over, it gives a nice feature of distinguishing the number of counts. Don't you wish it stayed this easy, right? Uh, again, just like the Pareto chart, the bar chart, uh, the pie chart demonstrates, um, uh, displays that the number of females, the proportion of females, the number, uh, proportion of males are about the same. And same thing with private. So private, uh, many more students, uh, uh, about three times as many students, actually more than three times as many students are not from a private setting. Uh, than the students that are from a private school setting. All right, uh, students typically find this refreshing because it's uh, super interesting. Oh, I'm sorry, super, super easy. So let's uh, go down. I'll tell you what, I'm going to actually approach this from the way you see it. So let's go to assignments. Now I want to go to demo video four. <clears throat> and let's see what we got. All right, question one. All right, I always wait nervously that this is actually going to kick in. Now, a little bit of more, a little bit more. Well, let's read the problem. Makes sense. A study was conducted to determine how people get jobs. The table lists uh, data from uh, 400 randomly selected subjects. Randomly selected tells me that I can put some uh, faith into the results. Uh, construct a Pareto chart that uh, corresponds to given data. All right, let's pump the brakes a little bit. I didn't go into this much in the previous video, but a Pareto chart um, evolves from uh, uh, a frequency distribution uh, for categorical variables. But there's a little caveat. First of all, one way we could demonstrate this data, and I wish I had a way to access it, <clears throat> is to use a bar chart like uh, I presented before. A Pareto chart is related to a bar chart, except there's two differences. Difference number one, the bars touch. Uh, difference number two, the ordering, the first category will be the category with the highest frequency. The second category will be the second frequency and so on uh, and so forth. So uh, what I need to do is match, first of all, that the frequencies are the same. So for networking, I need 272. Uh, clearly, number one can't be an option. Uh, B looks like it could be an option. Uh, again, it's N, right? Uh, N cannot be an option. And N, it can be an option. So it has to be B or D. And we can see that the other frequencies also align. For example, M needs to be 40, which it is. M needs to be 40, which it is. Now, by definition of a Pareto chart, right, we have a decreasing presentation of frequencies. 
We don't have that here. We start with the lowest, it goes up a little bit, there's the highest, and there's the third, uh, uh, I guess the second highest. Pareto chart, decrease, 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 decrease. So this must be the correct choice. Study was, uh, so this is just going to uh, take it uh, a step forward. So, uh, so if someone uh, would like to get a job, what seems to be the most effective? Well, I think clearly networking uh, would be the most effective. Don't you wish it stayed there? You're going to really, really wish you had to stuff back once we get into uh, estimation, uh, hypothesis testing. But uh, uh yeah, this is this is stuff that um, we we need to uh, cover. Uh, so we're still on how we get jobs, and uh, now we're going to match uh, the Pareto chart with the correct pie chart. And this is really just we need uh, m's to be the largest piece of the uh, of the pie. So here we have uh, yellow as m. So this can't be it. Uh, here we have yellow. So the only one that could match would be this one. Compare the pie chart found above to the Pareto chart given on the left. Can you determine which graph is more effective in showing the relative importance of job sources? I think the Pareto chart is more effective uh, because it gives uh, uh, just uh, our information more clearly presented. <laughs> That's funny. Neither one is effective. Uh, I don't know why I found that funny. Uh, but in that case, I think the Pareto chart uh, is the best. Now we're getting into a bar chart. Notice the difference from the Pareto chart, the bar chart that uh, the bars do not touch, and there's no natural ordering. We don't have to put the frequencies in, in uh, descending order. So, um, what impression does this graph uh, represent? Uh, well, the first thing that I notice is I think it's deceiving because uh, it appears that men are almost twice as likely as women. So let's see what this is actually representing. It compares teaching salaries of women and men at private colleges and universities. Uh, fortunately, we know that that gap is decreasing uh, in, uh, in pay across gender. But this graph gives a false impression that men are making about twice as much as women because of the height of the bars. The reason is it starts at 50,000, not at zero. So I think this chart, there, there's, I think it was Mark Twain said there's three types of lies, a lie, a damned lie, and statistics. Well, this is a damned lie in statistics, okay? Um, so... Let's see which one of these uh, matches the interpretation. So the graph creates an impression that women have salaries that are slightly higher. Well, that, that doesn't make sense. The graph creates an impression that men and women have approximately the same salary. That's not true. The graph creates the impression that men have salaries that are more than twice the salary of women. And this one says slightly higher than. So I think the graph gives this impression. Hmm. Well, it's not allowing me to uh, to select. Extremely annoying. Don't you love technology? All right, see, check answer. All right, <clears throat> does the graph depict the da data fairly? No, it doesn't, uh, in my opinion, because uh, the vertical scale does not start at zero. If the graph does not depict the data fairly, which graph below does? Well, I want the one that uh, starts at zero, which uh, would be this. Uh, this is starts at zero, but the women are higher, which clearly couldn't be deduced from uh, that graph. So I think it's clear that B would be the answer. 
All right, let's uh, move on. Uh, well, I guess that's it, isn't it? So, you know, that, I don't, categorical variables, uh, depicting categorical variables with Pareto bar charts and pie charts are something that I couldn't make difficult even if I tried. And trust me, I'll never try. My purpose in this class is try to simplify stuff, not make it harder. Uh, so this should be um, be something that uh, the mastery level on these types of questions should be uh, pretty high. All right, that's all I got. Take care.